You think I can bring Tommy back? God, I have a play. Underwater, there's a prank. Am I killing this boy so my brother can live? I just rewatched all nine episodes of Agatha all along, and wow, I noticed some scenes that take on a whole new meaning after that final twist. It's like putting together a puzzle and suddenly the whole storyline clicks. For example, what if Billy Maximoff is actually Nicholas Scratch, Agatha Harkness's son who died centuries ago? I know it's a wild theory, but there's a pretty solid explanation behind it. So stick around for the full breakdown. That's what makes Agatha all along feel so special to me. It's full of twists that really get you thinking. Something that might seem ordinary at first actually has big implications. And then there's the opposite. What? Some huge mysteries, like Wanda's storyline or that Mephisto name drop, might just be teasers to keep us hooked and prep us for what's next in the MCU. So before I convince you to give Agatha all along another rewatch, let's dive into some key scenes you'll want to look out for. Witch's Road is more of a myth than you think. Here's a tough truth. Witch's Road may be iconic in the Marvel comics, but in the MCU, it's mostly just a myth. Even though Billy Maximoff accidentally created this realm with his powers, the witch's road we see in Agatha all along doesn't quite match up with what's in the comics. In Agatha all along, the witch's road is actually a product of Billy's imagination, brought to life by his magic. The road wasn't real until you made it real. But it turns out not everything he imagined could become real through his powers. According to the MCU's version of the witch's road legend, any witch who completes all the trials on the road will find their heart's deepest desire waiting at the end. The road gave her what she was missing. And now she's gone. This promise lures members of the coven to face dangerous, life-threatening trials, hoping to make it to the finish. But guess what? There's nothing at the end of the road. No magical boom that grants every wish. But don't get too disappointed. Those who made it through the last trial still ended up getting what they wanted, just not in the way they expected. Billy, with Agatha's help, revived his twin brother Tommy by placing his soul into another boy's body. That was Billy's greatest wish, right? Meanwhile, Jennifer Kale got her powers back, not as a prize from the witch's road, but because she was unbound from Agatha, who had secretly bound Jennifer's powers for the past 100 years. And Agatha? She came out of the witch's road with her powers still weak. It was only thanks to Billy, who shared some of his power with her, that she regained her strength as a powerful witch again. So, in a way, everyone got what they wished for, but not as a reward from the witch's road. They could have had it all even without this realm. After all, legends are just stories, right? Sometimes it pays to be realistic, especially for the witches in the coven. Jennifer Kale made it out, but she's still in the dark. Jennifer Kale is one of those characters I'm betting will have a long journey ahead in the MCU. Actually, it wasn't my prediction. It was Lilia Calderu's tarot reading that called Jennifer the path ahead, suggesting she's set to play a key role as the high priestess in future stories. Jennifer managed to escape from the witch's road after unbinding herself from Agatha, and she was then suddenly thrown out of the mystical realm. It seems she got her greatest wish, to restore her magical powers, but nothing beyond that. In the finale, we see her crawling out of the dirt on the edge of Westview, then taking off, flying somewhere unknown. The thing is, while Billy, Agatha, and Rio Vidal know that Witch's Road is just a false reality Billy created by accident, Jennifer doesn't. She left without ever realizing this. So wherever she's headed, she's carrying this misunderstanding with her. Considering that Jennifer's character seems to be here to stay in the MCU, this whole myth about the Witch's Road will likely resurface in future projects. And it'll only be a matter of time before Billy and Agatha finally reveal the truth to her. Plus, with Agatha now a ghost, she's bound to stay by Billy's side as his mystical mentor. Billy's more mysterious than we thought. In episode five of Agatha All Along, we finally get a huge reveal. Teen is Billy Maximoff, or at least that's what we're led to think. He's Wiccan, a powerful sorcerer who's rumored to be as strong, if not stronger, than the Scarlet Witch in some ways. But honestly, are you completely satisfied with that explanation of who Billy is? Personally, I'm not. After rewatching all the episodes, I've noticed there's a lot more mystery around Billy than we've realized. 
Agatha's comments and reactions throughout the series hint at something deeper. Let's start piecing this together. In episode three, we have our first tragedy on the witch's road. Sharon Davis, AKA Mrs. Hart, dies. Sharon's dead. While everyone is heartbroken, Agatha seems pretty unfazed, which makes sense considering her past and the fact that she's seen more than her share of death. But then at the end of that episode, Agatha says something cryptic. I didn't think you had it in you. I didn't think you had it in you. At the time, it's not clear who she's talking to, but when it's revealed that Billy is the one who created these trials, we realize she's likely talking to him. So what's she really getting at? It's a strange comment for her to make, especially when she later tells Billy, yes. you're so well, much like your mother. So much like your mother. Sure, Wanda accidentally created the hex to bring her family back, but she didn't kill anyone to do it. And if we think back, Agatha already knew that the witch's road was a false reality. Plus, Billy doesn't seem like the kind of person to harm others just to get what he wants. Until, well, the witch's road starts to take lives. So what was Agatha really trying to say? Maybe her idea of Billy's mother isn't quite what we think. Reality bending? Sure, that lines up with Wanda, but the willingness to go darker? Maybe even cross certain lines? Agatha's line, I didn't think you had it in you, seems like a moment where she recognizes a shadow in Billy, a part of him that might actually come from Agatha herself. From episode three onward, it almost feels like Agatha views Billy as her own child. And yes, she did lose her real son, Nicholas Scratch, centuries ago. But that doesn't mean his soul is completely gone. Agatha all along even confirms that she's capable of bringing back a lost soul into a new body, letting them live on as a different person. If we see it from this perspective, it's not just Wanda that Agatha sees as Billy's mother. In one of my past videos, I mentioned Agatha's role in Billy and Tommy's creation. Wanda's pregnancy in WandaVision wasn't something she dreamed up as part of the hex. She herself was confused by it. And in the comics, we know Agatha's essence and power played a role in bringing Billy and Tommy into existence. So what if Billy Maximoff isn't just Billy? What if he's actually a blend of Billy and Nicholas Scratch from the very beginning? If that seems a bit far-fetched, hang tight. I'll break down some more scenes in the next part that might just convince you. Was the Darkhold in episode three Agatha's way of bringing Nicholas Scratch's soul back in Billy? All right, I know this theory might sound a bit out there, but hear me out. There's some logic behind it. In episode three, we see Jen warning Billy that Agatha can't be trusted, even claiming that Agatha traded her son Nicholas Scratch's soul for a copy of the Darkhold. Did you know she traded her own child for the Book of the Damned? At first, this idea seems pretty solid, especially during the trial where each witch faces their deepest fears. Agatha's fear? She sees a copy of the Darkhold in a crib, almost like a sign pointing to Jen's warning about Nicholas. But then, episode nine flips things around. We find out Agatha didn't trade Nicholas Scratch's soul for the Darkhold after all. So what if something else was going on? What if Agatha actually used the Darkhold to try bringing her son back? This forbidden act could explain why, out of nowhere, Wanda becomes pregnant with Billy and Tommy in WandaVision. Agatha's actions might have set off something with massive consequences, putting her on Mephisto's radar. Maybe she even made a deal with him which ended with Nicholas Scratch coming back as Billy, and by extension, making Billy and Tommy potential agents of Mephisto with magical powers. This could also explain why only Billy and Tommy on Earth 616 have powers, while their multiverse versions don't. If you caught Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, you might remember that little detail. Mind-blowing, right? And the hints don't stop here. There's even more mystery in the scenes to come that build on this theory. The Coven 2 lyrics in Witch's Road were only ever meant for Agatha and her son. All right, brace yourselves, because this theory might just blow your mind. Remember that moment when Agatha argued with Jen about the lyrics to the Witch's Road ballad? Agatha was convinced the line was, with Coven 2, glory shall be thine. Burn and brew with Coven 2, and glory shall be thine. <laughs> while Jen insisted it should be with Coven True, which she thought made more sense. Now, according to Lorna Wu's version of the Witch's Road Ballad, Jen wasn't wrong. 
But then we get to episode nine, which dives into Agatha's past with her son, Nicholas Scratch, and reveals that Agatha and Nikki actually wrote the original ballad. So who knows the lyrics better than the songwriters themselves, right? Turns out the line Justin really was Coven with Coven too, two. referencing just the two of them, Agatha and her son. This line was created back when Agatha and Nikki relied on each other, journeying together with a bond as their own little coven. That's why Agatha couldn't accept Lorna Wu's version. It just didn't capture her history or the real meaning behind the song. At first, this argument over lyrics seemed pretty minor, but after episode nine, knowing how the ballad came to be and what the witch's road ultimately represents at the end of the series, you can't help but wonder if Agatha's with Coven 2, Glory Shall Be Thine prophecy actually came true. Here's the kicker. Agatha essentially became a spirit, surrendering herself to Rio Vidal and reappearing as Billy's mentor. She told Billy they'd search for Tommy together. So Agatha and Billy, just the two of them, became the new Coven 2. Remember, she told Billy that her sacrifice to save him was a carefully calculated move. For you. I took a calculated risk. Almost like she'd been planning it since Nicholas Scratch's death. And here's the thing. This Coven 2 theory only fully works if Billy really is Nicholas Scratch reborn. It would also explain why Agatha didn't just cross over to the afterlife. She chose to stay, to become the Coven 2 again with Billy, while also avoiding facing Mephisto in the afterlife. A detail that ties back to what we discussed in the previous part. So I'm curious, are you all as confused by these theories as I was at first? Or did it all click for you right away? The idea of Nicholas Scratch existing within Billy doesn't change the fact that he's still the son of Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. But it does offer a solid explanation for some of the plot holes we've seen in the series. Plus, it gives Agatha's story real weight and significance for future MCU narratives involving Wiccan. Of course, Agatha wouldn't just give herself up to become a ghost for Wanda's son without there being more to the story, right? There's definitely something deeper here. Anyway, there are still so many great and mysterious scenes throughout Agatha all along that I want to dive into. I plan to break them down one by one, but I worry you might have already moved on to the next big thing in the MCU. If you're still interested in more discussions about Agatha all along, please let me know in the comments so we can figure out what content to tackle next on this channel. Of course, and for those I of you who are new here, welcome. This channel is all about the MCU, superheroes, and everything in between. So if you enjoy these discussions, hit that subscribe button. Just like this video, which dives into some specific theories. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends so our discussions can keep getting even more exciting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.